Okay, uh, welcome back everybody. This is part B, the second half of the 11th episode studying the topic of heaven. We had to break this two-hour show into two separate hours to try to accommodate Brother Mitch. Uh, we had some technical problems, so hopefully he'll be able to join us this time. Oh, there he is. Okay. Brother Mitch is here. Hello. Okay, Mitch. Fantastic. Well, we we see your picture, but at least we got your voice this time. So I'm not. I promise not to eject you again. I'm. I guess I'll never live that down. I feel I feel horrible. Like I got thrown out of the ball game or something. Did I yell at the ump? What did I do? Yeah. This is. I mean, I I I always pray so hard that Mitch is available. He can join us for the show, and then I end up kicking him off the show accidentally. All right. So let's just continue where we were. Um. Um. Let me see, we're right here. Uh, Even after the fall, writes theologian Eric Sauer, uh, quote, the destiny and the redemption of the earth remain indissolubly united with the existence and development of the human race. The redemption of the earth is, in spite of all, still bound up with man. Man is the instrument for the redemption of the earthly creation. And because this remains God's way and goal, there can be a new heaven and a new earth only after the great white throne, such as after the completion and conclusion of the history uh, of human redemption. So why don't uh, Mitch missed a little bit while he was gone. Eric, why don't you summarize the last 15 minutes or so the point that we've, we've been making about how, how comprehensive this redemption is. Well, we've been talking about how how it not only you know goes all throughout humanity, but it also goes out to the the extent of all of the universe. I mean, it includes everything God has ever created. Redemption goes back to cover all of that. Yes, yes. Now uh, you phrase that in a way that I thought was interesting. That made a, a, a bell go off in my head. It, you said everything that God has ever created, and uh, of course, then what? Some people would say, "Well, what about the angels or the fallen yeah. angels?" <laughs> obviously, <laughs> not, obviously not the angels. The yeah. angels are, are not redeemable. So, so all of creation, but of course there are there are certain beings that are lost, and uh, man was lost, but we get redeemed through our faith in Jesus. Right. Uh, however, the angels, there's no plan of redemption for them that right. we know of. Now, how, what do you think of me phrasing it that way? There's no plan of redemption for the fallen angels. None that we know of. None that we know of. I yeah, because I would say if he gave us a chance and we wronged him, I mean there would had to have been a time that you know maybe they had the same offering. I don't see why we would have the only, we would have a chance to be redeemed, but not them. But yeah. again, then again, it's, I'm not going to rest on my own understanding on this because maybe there's different things. But I don't know. There's always two sides to a story. Yeah, uh, it's a something something that. Uh, uh, we can conclude from scriptures that they do not get a second chance, I guess, by putting two and two together and looking at uh, 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 the Bible doesn't expressly state it, and therefore they don't have a plan. Uh, but then there's a lot of things that uh, uh, that we just don't know. Uh, what we actually understand, uh, what God knows, and God's plan, I think, is, is tiny com- compared to what his plan is. So, uh, does anybody else have anything to say about that before we go- move on? I thought there was a scripture about the judgment awaiting the angels. I can't remember what what book it was in, though. Well, it does, there is a, a verse that says, "We who are right. saved will judge the angels." We'll judge angels. Paul says, "Don't you know?" That's, I mean, yeah, that's in First Corinthians. Yeah, Paul's talking to the church and saying, "You can't make this judgment yourself. Don't you know that you're going to be judging the angels?" Mm-hmm. So I don't know how that's going to work, but uh, uh, okay. So now we'll move on. It says, "Was there really no death?" God made seasons, and I wouldn't be surprised if in Eden the colors of autumn were leaves were more brilliant than we see on the present earth. This quote death unquote of leaves in the fall would be part of a living tree's beauty, not its curse. Did leaves ever fall in Eden? Once they fell, did they rot? Eventually, wouldn't the earth have been covered with leaves? 
God made us to consume vegetation, which doesn't involve harm or suffering. Why shouldn't he allow it to decompose through natural processes? Did Adam and Eve step ankle deep in human and animal waste because it did not decay? Was there no compost to enrich the garden? Wine requires fermentation, a form of decay. Did bread not rise? So the point, summarize in your own words the point he's making, and this is a very significant point. I, I will ask Brother Jackson to speak first on this because this is a subject dear to his heart. As far as the DK, um, the thing the thing I don't understand is, according to everyone, and I mean everyone, there was death before Adam because people ate fruits and vegetables beforehand. And it says, I give you every green plant. A green plant is obviously something that's alive that is now, that, that dies after you eat it and everything. Therefore, I don't understand why that couldn't also extend to animals, especially, well, so what about things like jellyfishes that, if, if, that don't even shed blood and everything like that? And, bu and certain kinds of bugs have kind of a different kind of blood and everything. And that's why I think that just human death is what it's talking about coming through Adam. Yes. Okay, because I, I know um, Jackson, uh, when it comes to creation, he holds to a, a, a young, uh, a new, an old earth, and he mentioned once that, that, that uh, death did not come into the world through Adam and Eve, and, and this is the point Randy's making here, Le leaves would die, vegetation would die, and so on. So there's examples, we know that there's a certain form of death even before the fall of man. But uh, I think we probably, everybody on the panel, I suspect that we probably all agree that the death of mankind began at the fall. But the yes, death of, I agree with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was, uh, that's what I was going to say to Eric, the, uh, the upgrades. Mm -hmm. uh, how after the fall, the, the, fall, the, the fall came that we had uh, uh, pain during childbirth, and then how you said with the brain, we only use like 5% of our... Or 10% or whatever it is, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we got limited. We got limited and added things to our uh, to our cells that we didn't have originally have. Right. Does that what does that relate to what we're talking about? I don't, didn't see the connection. Uh, earlier on, Eric said uh, we're, we'll, how how we were made perfect, and uh, Jackson said that there it's a good design, but there's some flaws in it. I was saying that we were made without those flaws that we have now today. Oh, okay. That must have been when I, I lost my connection for like 30 seconds and you guys were talking without me, so I, that was probably what you said then. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Brother Mitch, uh, since uh, he was an uh, innocent um, and then was kicked off the show, no fault of his own, to, to speak on this. What do you think of this point that Randy's making about death before the fall? Well, one, I'd like to point out that we didn't eat uh, the animals at first. Um, but then Adam and Eve were given the skins of animals, so a sacrifice had to be made at that point. As far as decay is concerned, um, I think the world may have been a lot different back then to, than today. Yes. If, if, you, if you look at uh, even the electricity in the air, if you, if, you, uh, um, if you look at the idea that, that um, Tesla had, that he was able to, that, that we would actually have electricity running throughout our body where we could touch the light bulb and the light bulb would light, uh, the oxygen level may have been a lot different and regeneration of cells may have been a lot different back then. So whether the animals uh, actually had uh, a physical death or, 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 or not is not known. But I do know that the world was probably a lot different than it was before the fall, and definitely different than what it was before the flood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I talked about that uh, for a couple of minutes while you were absent, about how I think that the um, before, not only before the fall, but also there was a time between the fall and, and the, uh, the flood, where I think the atmosphere around the earth and everything was, was different. Uh, so, uh, Mike, what do you have to say about that? Mike? Can you hear us? Hello? Yeah, Mike, do you have something to say about this? Um, yeah, I, I would say, too, that uh, the atmosphere would have to be a lot different. Uh, I don't... 
I don't know exactly what it was, but I've heard a theory before where it's kind of like a giant greenhouse, and everything, the plants, the animals, and you can even look through the fossil record that uh, the animals and uh, uh, man and themselves seem to be a lot bigger in bone density and structure and... Uh, and just in many ways like that, from and not just limited to, to, uh, I guess yeah, just not limited to animals themselves, but the plant life around it. I think that this is a this would be actually an interesting topic to to talk a long time about on a, another show because there's a lot to be uh, uh, just said about this. It would be nice to have someone like uh, maybe Nephilim Free, if you know him, Brother Evan. There are some people that they spend a lot of time studying these, and they're really uh, uh, experts on this subject. And my, my main area that I focus on is soteriology, and that's just this, the study of salvation. But when it comes to creation and uh, end times and all those things, even though we probably all have a, a basic understanding of a lot of this, uh, I don't know if any of us really have a a vast library of resources to pull out and talk about how the uh, atmosphere and the climate and everything was different on the earth before. Yeah, yeah, because I, I personally hold to a local flood. A local flood? But there he goes again, Jackson, stirring up trouble, man. <laughs> Universal but local is what I would say. Yes. I never even heard of what's a, what's a local flood. Huh? Austin says, what is the local flood uh, theory? Okay, my, my belief, and this is just my belief, and obviously this is a very non-essential topic, but I believe that the flood was universal in that it wiped out every all humans except for Noah and his family, but I do not believe it was global. I believe it was, it was confined to a certain area. Okay. My, okay. my question to that would be, what about Mount Ararat? We, said, we know that it was 30 feet or so over the mountains, and Mount Ararat, Ararat is pretty high, so that flood must have been pretty big. Yeah, it was. It was big, but like I think, kind of like you know, when when God parted the Dead Sea, mm. and obviously there were walls of water right there. I think it was probably similar to that. Yeah. Well, let's see. Well, I know that they find sharks' teeth up on top of mountains, even in America. Yeah, it does seem like too. I, I have seen things where they're talking about the Grand Canyon and, and it, it, even in America, other places around the world that seem to be impacted by the flood. So uh, I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not convinced about the local flood, but uh, that's fine. Uh, all right. So oh, where was I? Okay. All of these natural processes could easily have been part of God's original design. Uh, while I believe was not part of his ideal world, was the suffering and death of living creatures. I see no evidence that suffering and death could be part of a world God called very good. In other words, he's saying for plant life to die, leaves to fall off of trees, for uh, people to eat vegetation and kill it by eating it, that uh, that could be part of God's plan. But suffering like animal life and plant and human life dying uh, would be suffering. And he says that does not conform with uh, what when God says it was very good. Well, your reaction to that? Huh? Do you want to, anybody want to respond to that? So Randy Elkhorn is making the point that uh, um, for for God to say that His creation was very good, He 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 does not see how uh, the suffering of animals and humans' death could be very good. So that could not have happened. Uh, otherwise, it, His creation would not have been very good. But for leaves and plants and stuff to to die, there's no suffering involved. So therefore, God could say, yes, it is very good, even though leaves and plants die. So is it very good if jellyfish die, which don't bleed, is my next question. 
Well, blood, blood. I don't know is if that, that is uh, you know necessarily part of the thing. Uh, but it, it, do yeah. jellyfish suffer when they die? I don't know. Do they do they have nerves and feelings? The thing is, it also depends on what you mean exactly by suffering, because weeds do struggle to live. We can observe that and everything. You know, they with their with with what limited a form of life they have, they they just naturally want to keep it. Mm -hmm. um, I think. I've always thought of very good as referring to his design of how everything works. I mean, I, I always thought that was what was very good, not that it was a very good state, and meaning it didn't have diseases or death or something like that, yeah. but I guess I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, I, 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 love, I love your input. What's, does anybody it, else want to respond? Does it give a, uh, a scripture reference there, or does it just say very good? I. Don't remember what part of Genesis that is. Yeah, we, we we cited that earlier. Uh, let me see if I can go back. I think it is very good. Uh, we covered that particular scripture earlier. Okay, Genesis one thirty one. Um, Okay, I'll read on here with Randy says. You can look that up and see if there's anything else you need to comment on that. But it, he says, I realize this raises inevitable objections. Were there no carnivores before the fall? From the shape of their teeth and claws to the position of their eyes to their digest, digestive systems, it could be argued that carnivores were designed by their creator to stalk, capture, and kill their prey. Were foxes designed to keep rodents in check, and falcons made to dive to catch and eat fish? Did the lion, quote, eat straw like the ox, unquote, as we are told he will one day? That's Isaiah 11:7. Was it true in Eden, as it will be on the new earth, that, quote, animals will neither harm nor destroy, unquote, Isaiah 11:9? Many think otherwise, but I believe the answer is yes. So Randy Alcorn says the answer is yes, that even though animals were created with these teeth and these uh, this uh, digestive systems to eat meat, that uh, therefore, but uh, they were not eating meat at that time. Well, we know we know that. Um we know that, uh, for instance, Jackson brought up the plant life. We know plant li plant life changed. The Bible says specifically that that after that point from the fall, that they would bring forth thistles and thorns, and they didn't do that before then. So clearly, if they changed, there's no reason we're thinking animals change as well. I'm sorry, brother. I thought that was such a good point. I couldn't resist applauding it. So they clearly they clearly didn't have those traits. They were different. The plants as we know them today are not the same as they were then. Okay. Anybody else have an opinion on that? I, I guess then then Eve would not have gotten a mink coat. Yeah. You know well, we we know she did get a mink coat uh, uh, after those fig leaves failed to do. Maybe the trick. that's when they came out and leather was in after that. Yeah. Was big time after the fall. Yeah. As far as we know, the scriptures tell us the first time that blood was shed was to cover Adam and Eve. Right. Okay. I realize that if there was no food chain, then the animal world of Eden was different than the animal world we know today. Indeed, our entire ecosystem was likely changed more by the fall than we can imagine. We don't know what the animals of Eden looked like. Did God change their form as part of the curse or as a way to help them survive after the curse? Is it possible that originally cheetahs ran for the sheer joy of it rather than to chase their prey? Could a lion have been capable of tearing apart other animals but have no desire to do so? Could he be, could he be powerful even with sharp teeth without being a killer? I think so. There is a special beauty in a great power that refrains from doing harm as Jesus himself demonstrated. Uh, he, I think he's really uh, presenting some real interesting uh, ideas. Yes. As a matter of fact, I think he's quite daring. 
a lot of people would refrain to even say something like this because it, they could be everybody point the finger, oh heresy, heresy. But he's posing these questions, and I think this is worth worth uh, discussing. Uh, what's everybody's response to his point? Just a thought, because uh, it, it came to mind when you mentioned that uh, blood hadn't been shed until the the fall a after Adam and Eve. So wouldn't that mean that Adam and Eve uh, were vegetarians, per se? Yeah, that's that's most people come to that conclusion, yeah. that uh, they were vegetarians. I don't see anything in Scripture that talks about them hunting animals or anything in the right. garden. So I assume they'd be eating plants there. Yeah. So when, when the point he's really making here is what, death came into the world at the fall. Mm -hmm. uh, well, okay, we we came. To, I think we all agree, and Randy Alcorn is making the point. Well, there was death. Uh, leaves fell off trees, uh, and 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 uh, vegetation, uh, you know, fruits and vegetables, and whatever was Adam and Eve ate, and whatever animals ate, uh, uh, something had to die so that so that we could be sustained and have nutrition. Uh, so. If that was the case, then there was some form of death, but there was no animal or, or uh, human death that we know of until God killed an animal to provide clothing for, for Adam and Eve. I, I do know that, isn't it in uh, the millennial reign or the, the, the new earth, this, the earth that's been regenerated, that uh, the beasts of the earth will kill each other? There'll be peace, like they'll eat the grass, like the, something else. Mm -hmm. There's a verse that says they'll eat grass instead. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He even made that point. He says, uh, "It says, um, did the lion eat straw like the ox, as we are told uh, he will one day?" Uh, could you look up Eric uh, Isaiah eleven seven? That's sure. what he's. That's what he's citing. Uh, in Isaiah eleven nine, lines seven and nine. Yeah. So I mean, some of these things about uh, the, uh, the the future are not only in the Book of Revelation. We find them in Isaiah too. There's a lot of okay. Um, Isaiah eleven seven says, "And the cow and the bear shall feed their young; their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox." And in Isaiah eleven nine it says, "They shall not hurt." nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Okay. So what do those two verses tell us uh, pertaining to this subject matter? There will, there will not be predators and prey. Yeah. So if there will not be, why can we not conclude that there were not in the past? They, they ate straw. The animals ate straw or, or vegetation. Now there may have been a difference there. Um, you realize that the there are, is a in the, in the beginning of the scriptures um, with Adam and Eve, that there was no animal to work the fields. Um, so the animals possibly that were named were Adam were the ones that were to work the fields, the oxen, the you know uh, the the animals that would, would uh, the horses or whatever that that were given to Adam. Um, this would reconcile the beginning of the scriptures where. The animals animals were made, and then it, then in a, in a couple chapters later, it said there was no animal to work the field. Uh, so outside of the garden, whether or not there was um, some sort of uh, competition or some sort of uh, biological you know biocycle, I'm not sure of. But mm -hmm. as far as from what we've read so far, you know, it, it seems to be positive. But you know, there's a possibility that within the garden there was no. There was nothing like like animals uh, eating one another, but it may have been that outside the garden there was, and the time of the kingdom, the coming kingdom, it may well be that they won't. Uh, yeah. Just a thought to throw out there because I know that there's a a difference here between the beasts of the field that were not created yet and that Adam named because you, you look at the beginning of the scriptures and the animals that were created beforehand. Mm hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, and then you look at creation too. You say, well, what about the ocean? What about all the, the fishes and predators in the ocean? Were they just all eat, eating uh, plankton or something instead of uh, you know a big fish eating a little fish? <laughs> I go. No, no one really knows. But the, you know the speculations can get you crazy. So. 
Mm-hmm. I always thought that when um, when Jesus returns and we have the millennium of the non-predators, that he's going to fundamentally change the DNA of all these things. Because a snake, for example, all snakes actually don't eat any vegetation at all. They only eat other animals. They're all carnivorous. So wow. we would have to change the DNA of snakes. Well, yeah. The snake also was a serpent that had feet before the fall. Yeah. Very beautiful creature. Yeah, but I was one. I've always wondered: was that, was it just that one serpent, or were there other snakes that didn't have legs? Because a snake does is beautifully and intricately designed the way it the way it moves and up and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you are you talking about the the? Are you referring to the fall? Yeah. yeah, the one that um the one that Satan was. That's an interesting word because uh, I've done a little bit of study on that. I'm not in depth, but the word used there is nakash, and even some of the ancient uh, rabbis did not think that it was per se a literal snake that they were referring to, and um, obviously raises the question: How did a snake? Uh, I'd have to. I'll just go to there. Genesis three. Give the apple to Eve. I don't know if it says literally says that, but mm-hmm. does it say snake or serpent? It says serpent, but the Hebrew word there is nakash. Yeah, nakash. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm just wondering if there's any lizard form animal today that actually doesn't crawl on its belly. When you look at the the alligator and the komodo dragon. Even though they have feet, they still drag themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's one type of lizard I think that runs on water, but I think that most of the time it it uh, it, it crawls on its belly. Mm-hmm. So, so you're saying it might be a lizard then, or well, a snake or a lizard, the serpent, you know. Yeah. Because well, uh, uh, there are legless lizards too, by the way. There are lizards that don't have any legs that you could mistake for a snake if you didn't look closer. And there are snakes that have feet, I guess. They're called lizards, aren't they? No. <laughs> I know, just no, kidding. They're actually different DNA with each other. Like some lizards are omnivores, for example. No snake is anything but a carnivore that's ever been yeah. discovered. Well, I think the point Mike's making there is that, uh, you know, we, we have to uh, try to figure out as best we can the meaning of those words and what they mean to us today. And maybe Nakash, uh, the way they saw that word was something different than we're thinking in terms of serpent or, or uh, snake. Okay, I, I, go ahead. Um, now, Nakash, I, in, uh, and also interesting, beast of the field didn't necessarily mean, uh, it, it, it uh, didn't limit it to something at, that was, um, I guess it could, from what I understand, I've I've come to the conclusion that the word used there that it wasn't a literal snake, but a upright uh, divine being that uh, was it was it's called subtle. So I believe it was, this being was deceptive, and Adam wasn't deceived, which is an interesting point in that part when they take and I just read it and uh, Eve took the fruit. So it it doesn't mention that the that the serpent or Nakash gave the fruit to Eve. Eve took the fruit, but there was obviously trust there for that uh, for that to happen. It it okay because uh, that because obviously it refers to that. It doesn't directly call the snake Satan, but in other parts of the Bible it refers back to that as that old you know that old serpent that it refers to that being the devil. So and he and um. You know he's referred to as the angel of light, so it yeah. wouldn't, wouldn't have been uh, it wouldn't have appeared as something bad, but good with a hidden uh, hidden agenda. Well, I'm wondering if all dragons actually crawled on their bellies, because it may have been a dragon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, maybe a dragon. They. Uh, but the thing is, you, you get the, the lost world, this secular world, and 
you know, one of the things they love to do is, is laugh at us and say, "You really believe yes. a, a snake? A snake was talked to, to them?" You know, I said, "Yeah, I even well, believe you a, know, I believe a donkey talked too." Well, here, here's an interesting thing. I was, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to throw something out there, and this is pure speculation. I'm not saying it was the case. It doesn't really say this in scripture, but why can't why could we not assume that it was common for Adam and Eve to communicate with animals? And so this was not an unusual occurrence to to have an animal communicate with them. I mean, maybe in some way they were able to communicate with the animals. I've heard that point, too, that uh, they believe that animals actually had weak vocal capabilities. So I have heard that, too. Yeah, so so it's it, it's not... It does notice in, in in the account there. It doesn't strike Eve as strange that the that the serpent quote unquote serpent was even speaking to her. She did not consider that strange. That's, um, sorry. No, go ahead. That's why I uh, par partially why I hold to a view that I believe it was an actual actual upright being of some nature because, you know. Eve wasn't just freaking out when this like a snake started talking to me. You you, you would think that would surprise someone if right <laughs> well, unless unless it was commonplace unless right, it was something exactly. that they that they exactly. Did, you know. exactly yeah well one thing that we I think we all could agree on uh, is that uh, uh, Satan and I, I think angels as a whole um, good angels and fallen angels they are shapeshifters. Mm -hmm. They have an ability to take a form of in, anything, I guess. Well, yeah. and we know they can indwell animals because they, they asked to be put into the swine, and Jesus put them into the swine. So we know oh, they could yeah. indwell animals. Yeah. So you see, there there's two possible uh, answers right there that right that I think are, make perfect sense. Either Satan just uh, became a shapeshifter and appeared as a serpent and was able to talk, or or maybe uh, maybe uh, uh, what was the point you just made, Eric? Oh, uh, they, 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 um, they were able, actually able to indwell animals. Oh, yeah, indwelling the animal. Another thing I thought of a minute ago when you were talking is you, you're saying their vocal cords. Well, maybe, they're, maybe their vocal cords were no different, but and yet whatever sound they made, made them, maybe Adam and Eve had the ability to understand, understand the sound. Right, right, an understanding, right, exactly. Yeah. That's possible. I just want to um, make an important distinction. Uh, the angels themselves, I, I, I believe that... Uh, if you go to the scripture, they, they're referred to as physical beings with a spiritual element to them. And until later on in Genesis, or, or not in Genesis, but later on, it, I believe there's a difference between the devils that dwell the swine and the angels themselves. Right. I do not believe those are the same entities. Right. Demons can, could indwell. They would indwell animals. It wasn't, it wasn't it, it, angels who were still... Uh, on good terms with God, the the angels the angels that were not demons they right. did not but dwell you know, animals they didn't go they, into animals demons did, um, but they, angels angels as oh, that's a good distinction yeah I would want to share that too I don't want to say angels like for instance like Gabriel or you know those angels didn't go into uh, animals and people and things of that nature they they do not indwell people the good angels uh, demons are the only ones that Scripture states try to indwell other people and animals yeah we we have uh, two cr groups of critics when it comes to understanding these things. Uh, the, some atheists would say, oh, they laugh and say, you, you believe that the, the snakes talk. Uh, or, or even some some Christians will believe that, well, you can't take the Bible literally. That's all, all allegory and stuff. And, I've heard that over and over again with atheist uh, arguments. Yeah, and you believe that you believe that all those animals were put on a, on a boat, you know, and you, you believe that Jonah was really in the belly of a whale. Or I say, look, uh, do you believe Genesis one one? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. <laughs> to me, that's that's far greater miracle than than Jonah be, being in the whale for three days. You know, if you believe God could create the heavens and the earth, why couldn't all the other miracles who are far less than that right. be very easy? That, that is one thing I noticed. Uh, there's two huge Christian movies being made this year. Noah comes out, and then they're also made a new movie. It's like a knockoff of uh, Passion of the Christ. It's called The Son of God. That's coming out in February. So, I mean, that's – Hollywood never makes Christian movies, and then they make two of them the same year. That's something new. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me move on here. Uh, and page 125. Uh, it, Randy Alcorn says, quote, we know, unquote, Paul says, that the whole creation has been groaning, unquote. That's Romans 8.22. 
Consider the shocking cruelty in the animal world where mothers sometimes devour their offspring, and most of those that survive are mercilessly killed by predators. If, quote, the whole creation, unquote, is as comprehensive as it appears, then there is not an amoeba or chromosome or DNA strand or galaxy unaffected by mankind's fall. That is the bad news. Paul follows with the good news uh, that what went down with mankind in the fall will come back up with us when Christ's redemptive work is completed. The, the God who raised Jesus will in turn raise his people and the universe. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for that. I'm groaning for it myself. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking earlier while you're gone, Mitch, about this same point about the groaning. And uh, uh, I know, yeah, I, I, I've, I groan uh, quite often. I'm, I groan thinking, wow, I just, I can't wait. I can't wait for my new body. For, I can't wait for the new heavens and new earth. I'm just so excited about it. Why not now, Lord? Why not? And, of course, uh, you know, God... Uh, God's will be done, uh, so uh, I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm not going to go. Like, it's I'm like being gonna, a little kid waiting for Christmas. Yeah, I'm not going to take a. I'm not going to take a bottle of pills tonight just so I can be there quicker. But uh, I got a bottle. You got a bottle? Thanks. A lot of alcohol too. Well, not, you know. When you come to Las Vegas, bring that with you, okay? All right. Of course, of course. The thing is, then you'll lose rewards if you do that. Right. Oh, yes. okay. Now you straighten me out. Okay, thanks. Right. So, Called the least in the kingdom of heaven. I I think I don't know the exact reference to that, but I've I've heard that point being mentioned that you essentially because suicide is murder. Yeah. Now, now now we are we were joking around, but the thing is obviously suicide is a uh, is a very wrong thing. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Austin. For anybody, any viewer who's watching this video, I I wouldn't even contemplate uh, uh, no. my my early demise just so I can no. go to heaven sooner. But I do groan in anticipation, and I just long to be with my Lord. And uh, yeah, if, uh, if anyone if anyone watching this is struggling with suicidal thoughts or whatever, you know, realize that there is hope and everything, and God will uh, will reward reward us all for persevering. Absolutely. And it, and as long as you're still breathing, God doesn't matter what age. God still has a purpose for for you here on this on this planet. I mean. Yeah, it's still peace for you. Mm -hmm. I know a guy who tried it. He failed. He missed. He blew his head off. Actually, blew his blew, the bullet came out of his temple, but didn't go into his brain. He lived to tell about it. Right now, he's happy. He's so glad that he that, that he that he lived through the experience because whatever he was going through, it all changed within a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. I uh, just want to say that because anybody who's contemplating it doesn't seem to think that they have any hope. Obviously, this person who did this did have hope. He just didn't see it. And mm. in God and in Christ, there's always hope. Yeah. There's no Jim Jones here. We don't want to do anything, uh, you know, that would that that would uh, that would shorten our time on this planet. Although, right. you know, I, I I would like to take a shortcut to heaven, but we have work to do here. Yeah, we have. Uh a lot of different personalities on the panel and uh, for me for example uh, I like to try to be funny every once in a while and <laughs> most of the time I only amuse myself uh, uh, brother Mitch he's, he's just naturally funny and he makes a lot of jokes too but so if you're watching the show I hope you can understand sometimes we just like to laugh and have make a joke so uh, that was uh, uh, not to be taken seriously uh, Randy Alcorn says, there is such a close biblical connection between the inhabitants of the earth and earth itself that the phrase, quote, the world, unquote, or cosmos is sometimes synonymous with uh, people. <clears throat> quote, God so loved the world, unquote, and quote, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, unquote. In John's Gospel, uh, the quote, the world, it often refers to fallen humanity in rebellion against God, and it is people, not the planet, who believe in Christ. Uh, still, there are words for mankind, 
uh, that don't connect us to the earth, unlike cosmos, which does. In Romans 8, we see that the redemptive work of Christ not only rescues people who believe in uh, him, it rescues the world itself. Just as we will die, the earth will be destroyed, and just as we will be raised, the earth will be renewed. Okay. So isn't that interesting? Well, a lot of people think, so God's, God so loved the world, uh, it's referring to the planet. Uh, but but we, we I think we all agree that uh, that verse, when God so loved the world, is talking about God loves mankind. Right. Yeah, the, the, the Calvinists who say that that means the planet, believe it or not, and not just not all, but believe it or not, that is an argument that some of them have. It seems really absurd line of reasoning to say, for God so loved the planet that he died for people. Because even they would have to admit he died for the elect or whatever. But he loved the planet so much that he died for the people doesn't make any sense to me. Mm -hmm. Well, also Second Peter three nine, not willing that any should perish. So I mean, there's another. Yeah. Well, I, I would have my first of all on Second Peter. I would say when he was saying he was not willing that any should perish, it had to do with rulers uh, that you should pray for your, pray for the rulers and, and and the people who are above you, and so that salvation is for everyone. Uh, and as far as uh, God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, as far as the world is concerned, yes, the gospel went out into the whole world to those who believe. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, we're getting close to the end of this chapter. He says, uh, uh, it's fair to say that most Christians believe there will be no carryover into heaven of our present culture, art, technology, or the products of human creativity. Indeed, it's common to doubt uh, if we will even remember our lives on earth or the people whom God used to influence and shape us, including our families and closest friends. If our assumptions about the end of the world were correct, what analogy would we expect Paul to use for what will happen to creation? An old man dying? A mortally wounded soldier grasping, gasping his final breath? Those images would fit well with the belief that the universe will come to a violent final end. But Paul doesn't use analogies of death and destruction. He uses the analogy of childbirth. Quote, the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up until the present time. Romans 8.22. Childbirth. So how does this a groaning for childbirth uh, uh, talk about all relate to all of creation. Well, child birth is inevitable. It's going to come about, no matter what a woman does. Child birth it has to happen. I think even if the, the the woman dies, although we don't want to see that happen, I think she still delivers. Um, and so, or the child dies. But but as far as childbirth is concerned, uh, you know, when the time comes, you know, a, she has to give birth. So it has to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, let me bring this up. I don't. I, I can't really um, speak this with authority. Uh, I heard this somewhere, and maybe I can get your uh, guys' opinion on this. <clears throat> but uh, when God said that um, uh, because of uh, the fall, women would suffer in childbirth, uh, is it true that the only species? Where there is pain in childbirth is with is with with humans. Women suffer and have horrible pain for childbirth, but but horses and and cows and something they're not screaming and crying and, and cursing their 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 the, the the husband that impregnated for the pain. You know, we should have heard the things my wife said to me when she was in labor. <laughs> Yeah. So, do any animals suffer pain as they're giving birth, or is it only a, a human woman? You know, when I said that to my wife, I said I didn't feel a thing. She got very upset with me. <laughs> no, I don't understand what you're all going through all this problem for. What doesn't look that hard? <laughs> and you're and you're still and you're still with us today. That's amazing. Yeah. See, that, that's our, that's our unempathetic <laughs> mind for you neurotypicals. Mm -hmm. Um, the Korean women often don't feel pain in birth. In birth. What's that? The, the Koreans and the, and, and the Oriental women seem to be able to just uh, Chinese or whatever who just squat in the field and be able to to, to deliver. But I guess uh, you know that's kind of you know 
probably some sort well, it of. It still hurts. It's just that they're more used to it. Yeah, yeah. maybe maybe that's what it is. You know, just like, like for example, people who go cycling a lot are used to sitting on the bicycle. I got a I, like like a horrible cut of blood circulation when I went on a long bike ride and hadn't gone on any bike rides in years and years. Okay, my question, and nobody's answered it yet. I said, but, yeah, my, and, my mic cut out. I, I said, that, yeah, I think there is pain in animals. Well, why do you think that? I've seen some stuff on documentaries. I can't remember what animal it was. Maybe it was a hippo or, or hippopotamus or something, but <coughs> she was screaming giving birth. Oh, okay. All right, so at least a hippopotamus seems to have pain. But What uh, about... What about a little bit more uh, relevant animal? What about horses? It seems like they, I don't know if they express pain, but it seems like... Discomfort? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'd say there's dogs. definitely something there. Yeah. Maybe, it was, maybe it was transferred to a lot of different animals. There's an interesting point he makes here that I never thought of before. Uh, he says, there are pains in childbirth for mother and child. I never really thought of a child having pain in childbirth, but it seemed like um, uh, a child in the womb trying to come out that uh, narrow birth canal, and uh, it would be would be painful for them too. But I, I don't know if we we know that. It, it seems logical, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, AmericanScientist.org says that it does seem to be saying. Obviously, this is a secular website and everything that childbirth in humans is kind of unique for the record. Which of course, which of course doesn't mean that other other animals don't feel pain at all. But in, this is interesting. Maybe increase the pain. Worst. What'd you say, Austin? I say that probably uh, mankind that. Uh, the women, they probably have the worst type. Well, okay, of okay, they have the worst. Okay. That's why I was about to say that perhaps it's it's an increased pain for mm -hmm. the for humans in particular because of yeah, the fall. No one on this panel will ever know. But. Yeah. Well, it seems like if it's true that the baby uh, is 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 it's a painful experience being born. Uh, of course, hey, does anybody remember their birth? Can you remember if you had any pain? Oh, man, I was so mad at that doctor yanking me out of there. <laughs> I the ball, and all of a sudden, I said, push. I'm like, hey, what are you doing to me? But yeah. uh, I lived. I'm all right. Well, the, the reason the reason I look the way I do right now is because of those four steps he put on me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, you could say something. But <laughs> he says, but, the, the fall... <laughs> Two feet on the table. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fallen but redeemed children of God will be transformed into something new. Sinless, uh, wise stewards of the earth. Today the earth is dying, but before it dies or in its death, it will give birth to the new earth. The new earth will be the child of the old earth, just as the new human race will be the children of the old race. Yet it is still us, the same human beings, and it will also be the same earth. So uh, this is a point that he's made uh, quite a bit uh, discussing this new heavens and new earth, is that it's going to be the same earth. It'll be destroyed in a way, but it's not totally destroyed and uh, brand new created. It's, it's destroyed in a way so that it's kind of restored and refurbished and to be uh, better than ever. Okay, uh, this, uh, this is uh, uh, the beginning of chapter 13, so we'll pick up there next time. Let's take uh, uh, w what we uh, normally do, Mike, since you're first time here. Uh, when we close the live broadcast off, then we, we talk privately as long as anybody feels like it, and sometimes we talk for a long time, so everybody's welcome to continue uh, talking. We'll have our own little private conversations. Uh, but before we end, I'd like to get two things. Uh, one... Uh, just everybody's like uh, conclusion as to what we discussed tonight. Anything that stood out is really, really relevant to you. Uh, and then finally, we want to tell people how how they can have this eternal life in heaven when we're done. So, how about we'll start with Brother Austin? What was what was significant to you? Austin, you still there? Okay, let's, let's start with uh, Brother Eric. 
Well, you know, we finished off. I thought it was great how we finished up talking about birth, um, childbirth. You know, we, we talked a lot about the trauma and the trial that goes with the trial with the childbirth. The labor increases. It gets harder towards the end. It, c- it could be painful for the child. We don't know because we don't remember back that far. But, you know, what comes of all that pain? We go through all this pain. We go through this pain in life and all the things that we, we go for and we're asked to persevere. We're asked to endure through things, go through our tribulations, trust in Christ for our salvation. And on the other side of that, at the end of that, you know, it's all worth it. You know, all the pains you go through will be worth it. It's like they say of a mother. A mo- I've heard this about all the mothers, you know, that I've talked to said this, the good mothers. You know, said, said, you know, I went through all that pain, and at the end of it, when I held my child, I forgot about all that pain. The beauty of that child of the birth, all the pain kind of went away. It's just you're so, you're so taken with this, this new life, this new birth. And I think that's a perfect picture of what it's going to be like for us when all this comes to completion. It's going to be going through all these trials and that to come through that. And it just makes all that just fade away for the new birth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So thank you, Brother Eric. That was a really, really nice conclusion. Uh, Brother Jackson? Oh, actually, what stood out to me, interestingly, was... Something that happened in the first uh, the the first hour of the show, which when we were in the part one was when Eric and I were talking. First of all, first Eric brought up the point about the um, about the the disasters and stuff, and I and then I asked him a follow up to that was what could this transfer into people's personal lives, like problems humanity is having and everything. And his answer was yes, and everything like that. And I think. That's really good to keep in mind because I've been kind of battling some depression lately. So that's really that really stood out to me that comment of Eric's. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right, brother Jackson, thank you for participating. Uh, hey, I, I apologize. I'm back. I'm sorry. Okay. All right, go ahead, brother Austin. Uh, yeah, this this is a great teaching. You know that we have that stuff carry over and the things to look forward to, and you know, what a remarkable thing that is. And uh, I, you know, I'm very, uh, very interested. You know what it's going to look like and how it's going to be. You know, because it's it's going to be better than imagined, and that's just an exciting thing to think about. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Austin. Uh, we can imagine. We can study the scriptures. Uh, we can read Randy's book, and we can all hype, uh, try to figure it all out. Uh, but uh, when we're finally there, uh, it's going to be um, like a million times better than we could ever ever dream. I believe that's how I, why I'm so excited about it. Uh, and brother Mike, um, I joined kind of late, but uh, the a couple of things that stood out to me was the discussion about the uh, talking about the deaths and different species and thinking about how a lot of the life before the fall and even after the fall raises a lot of other questions but uh, that's what kind of stood out to me on, on, uh, on that. Right. And we're very glad this is your first time in a hangout and I, I hope you had a good time and can continue to join us. Thank you Brother Mike. And no matter how many times they try to get rid of Brother Mitch, man, he finds his way back, man. I, I reject him from the show, and he's popping up again. He's like a, a, one of those stalkers, you know? <laughs> Remember I made that video about all these people stalking me? Resurrected. Brother Mitch. Resurrected. That's what it is. I was resurrected. <laughs> as, far as, uh, as far as this whole thing is concerned, just looking at the idea that – Animals may have had different jaw structures and have been, may have been able to communicate, but yet man has dominion over the earth. It struck me as something that was always some, always strange. That if we had come about by chance, then how is it that this species, man, was lucky enough to become the only one to be able to build airplanes or, or, or send, send satellites out into space? I don't see alligators doing this. I don't see dolphins walking, you know, around uh, talking to us. I, I know they're pretty good in the sea, but I don't see any under underwater cities down there that they could have built or coordinated. I'm sure they wouldn't have been able to if they were able to work together and communicate as well as they could. I don't see monkeys building cities, um, but only man. And when I see the fall, 
I also see the answer and to all of the problems that I have in my life. And there, you know, I, I don't want to trade anybody's problems because you don't want mine. But, <laughs> but if you think, if you think about it, you know, although I have a task down here and, and I'm going to go through everything that God puts me through and go through this journey, that there's going to be a place where everything that happens actually doesn't have problems. Heaven seems to be that place where everything that has gone wrong here on this planet will be completely right up in heaven. And the way to get there is to understand our imperfection and look at his perfection on the cross. Christ was perfected by walking his journey. He, wasn't, he was perfect, but he was perfected. And what that meant was he, what he did came to fruition, fulfillment. And so what I would like to say is that when I'm done with my journey and my perfection comes or the fulfillment comes, I don't have to be perfect on earth. But when he, his perfection comes, it will be bliss. Bliss. Mm -hmm. I guess the two words that really uh, stand out to me when we talk about uh, our eternity in the the new earth uh, is uh, paradise and bliss. These are two words that to me really uh, give me this wonderful hope and excitement about my future. Um, we we asked we asked the question in a previous show. What what's the how do you summarize the Bible in like you know uh, one sentence and. And uh, the, the way that I summarized, or I said one person summarized it who wrote a book on this, it, it's paradise lost and paradise regained. And that's really what uh, this is all about. The Bible is all about the story about how man fell from this relationship with God and, and um, basically man declared his de uh, independence from God. Basically said, maybe I can become my own god. I can. I'll just do what my thing instead of. Uh, so that caused the fall of man, and the fall of all of creation. But God does not desire that we are, be in this fallen state. He wants a relationship with us. So He has a plan so that we can regain this paradise. And uh, yes. if, if if you're getting excited about uh, this possibility for you now, if, if you've been watching these shows about heaven and you're getting excited about it, then it would be a shame if you didn't know how to get it. How, how do you get this eternal life on the new heaven, the new earth, this paradise, this bliss forever and ever? What do you have to do? Well, I'm happy to tell you that there's good news. That's the word, the word gospel literally translates to good news. And the good news is that even though mankind cannot achieve this on his own, because the Bible says we all fall short of the glory of God, uh, no matter how hard we try to follow religions and be a good person and try to please God, uh, man's ways all fall short. You cannot do it. That's why God said man is in a hopeless state. He needs to be saved. Right. God said, I'm going to become a man, Jesus Christ. And Jesus said the reason he did it was so that he could give his life as a ransom. So Jesus became a man. And he died on the cross and paid for all of our sins. So now, now there's no uh, barrier between man and God. We can this relationship can be restored because Jesus paid for all of our sins. So that isn't that wonderful news? Your sin debt is paid. There's no no issue between you and God anymore. Now that all this all that remains now is will you receive the gift of eternal life? Jesus can give you eternal life, and you can you can believe it because he raised himself from the dead. And that proves that he is God and he has the power of life and death. So you can put your trust in Jesus. He's trustworthy. He proved it. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus. Reject your own ability. Understand that you cannot get to heaven through your own efforts. No matter what, you can join all the religions of the world. You can become the most religious person in the world. You can give all your money to charity, and you will still not have eternal life in heaven. You need Jesus Christ. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He's offering you eternal life. It's a free gift. All you've got to do is put your faith in him instead of yourself. Depend on Jesus. Rely on him, not yourself. And when you do that, 
when you understand, when you come to the conclusion that you can't do it and you need Jesus to give you eternal life, that's when he gives it to you, when you finally trust him completely. He gives you eternal life. He promises you bliss in paradise. So I hope you do it. If you decide to, to call on the name of the Lord, you believe on Jesus Christ, uh, please make a comment on this video and let us know because uh, I'm sure everybody on the panel would love to celebrate if, if you do. Uh, I would just please. like to add something. Yeah. Yes, go ahead. Um, also that whatever your view is on history, that that is not a reason to reject the teachings of Jesus Christ and the claims of Jesus Christ that has more evidence behind the writings of the New Testament than ancient, uh, older texts that have been accepted as truth. Mm -hmm. Yes, as you as you study, there's many pa like, people... Like, for instance, the, the claim made uh, earlier because the talking snakes hear, uh, hear that over and over with atheists. Well, whatever your view is on other books of the Bible, the, the teachings of Jesus... Uh, you you got to come to a point whether you believe uh, an ancient, uh, quote-unquote, ancient testimony when other testimonies dating back by, uh, further than, than the New Testament are accepted as truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would really be a shame if somebody rejected Jesus Christ uh, just because they were not convinced that all the stories in the Bible were accurate. Um, I have a playlist on my YouTube channel uh, proving the Bible is true. Uh, uh, so if you go watch those videos, then you can be, I think you'll be persuaded that the Bible is true and trustworthy, and the Bible says we all need Jesus Christ. So please, call on Amen. Jesus right now. Put your faith in him, and if you do, uh, please let us know. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ.